सो द फर्स्ट टॉपिक इन थर्ड चैप्टर एज यू सी द नेम इंफॉर्मेशन सिस्टम्स नो बिफोर वी बिगिन विद दिस कंटेंट आई वुड वॉन्ट टू टेल यू वॉट दिस चैप्टर ब्रॉडली कंटेंट्स दिस चैप्टर ब्रॉडली कंटेंट्स थ्री एस्पेक्ट्स विच आर वन इंफॉर्मेशन सिस्टम कॉन्सेप्ट दैट मीन्स वॉट ऑल गोइंग टू मेकिंग अप एन इंफॉर्मेशन सिस्टम इट टॉक्स अबाउट दैट देन द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर टॉक्स अबाउट इंफॉर्मेशन सिस्टम controls okay let me just put that for you here so chapter number 3 which is on information system concepts information system concepts so break down into three first one is called as information system components that is what is an information system made of like basically hardware software user the person who's using it or working on it all those will be information system components then we also talk about information system information system controls i think this is not the first time that we are seeing because you know any good concept any good concept at the end of the day we'll have to face some kind of risks that uh, the environment surrounding that will produce sometimes these risks are understandable while sometimes it's important that you also take precautions we already know how risk management works right we have to do something to take care of these risk aspects try and do something whereby you can bring down the element of something going wrong so that is what the story there is and we can take that into consideration accordingly we will see for each sort of a risk what sort of a control can be installed that will come at a later end now whether these controls are working as per design or not whether the controls designed are right in fact do you need something now in present situation where many thing is uh, are completely it oriented what sort of a tools can we use to go for audit so information systems audit so these are the three parts to the chapter towards the end of this chapter they had there is one topic which uh, i am going to give you as a homework for the first time throughout the entire syllabus we didn't leave any concepts now also you won't leave but there is one topic which discusses about the roles in the organization so we'll discuss these three and then you can take that like the fourth branch roles in an it organization setup you know just like how we have ceo divisional managers and all we discussed in management right same way here we talk about a cio chief information officer then a system analysis team this dba database administrator somebody who is in charge of the data warehouse network administrator who takes care of network so roles involved in an organization don't worry i will give you the overview and then only give you that as a homework because that is not uh, any concept that is just about who are there in the organization and hardly there are any questions expected from that but what's more important in this topic is the set of components then the controls and then the audit and audit related tools you will learn something very interesting here called as computer aided audit tools or computer assisted audit tools and then we will also talk about what sort of controls uh, are needed now this chapter not only from the perspective of you as a ca student or for the marks in the exam you should be bothered about but you should also be bothered because you are using information systems and we all know how security conscious we are so better learn all these and understand the controls and maybe you know one of the points that they will tell you little later is you know don't use loose passwords okay frequently change your passwords though we know certain things but password is not the only thing that's controlling the whole world right so there are multiple other things sometimes you end up getting emails which says click here to win if only life was so easy click there and win so much money why will we have all this so there are lots of malware malware means a bad coded program i want you to remember this word uh, trojans root kits in the first chapter we discussed about some of the problems computer related problems the first one offenses there virus okay we have some names 
like virus worms okay so under uh, certain star point let me say all this virus worms root kits trojans so all these are different sort of viruses with different agendas so all of them are they are all called as what malware malware means the word mal stands for bad where as in software so malware is nothing but a bad coded program that is the intention is to do something wrong bad coded program okay so this is what the story is all about and now uh, we cut it down to information system components wherein we will um, kind of make it even more interesting to see all the six branches that are involved in let's start with uh the concepts of various components that are involved in information system but before we discuss anything we should know how an information system works and precisely we all know how computers or information systems work what do they do they take the input they process that input they deliver you the output you might as well store that so input process output and storage or input process storage and output these are the four functions of an information system which is exactly why you use the information systems now it's not like human beings can't use it only thing is we have storage which is very limited and uh, if you talk about human being storage there is a tendency that we may forget but your system doesn't do all that oh sorry i forgot to you know store what you worked on friday it won't tell all that no so it will store whatever you did and if you want it to store when you want to delete it it will delete so let us start with this story only what is information what is system i think in the very first segment of our uh, eis discussion introduction to what is information what is system we have seen a set of interrelated objects working together to achieve a goal will be system while a processed and meaningful form of data which can be help for doing uh, certain activities and wherein you can infer that and make decisions that is what will be called as information so very basic concept so once again quickly we will read the intro because that's uh, kind of very very easy once that intro is done then we will go ahead and uh, take care of the next aspect information system is a combination of please mark it up what is it a combination of it is a combination of hardware so starting with people hardware software people hardware and software if these are there maybe stationarily you can sit at one place and work but no sir i want to be part of the world sitting at my house i want to be a part of the world so right now like how we are discussing through various aspects how is this possible only through networks and communication devices so followed up by two more aspects communication devices networks like of course we all have routers at our home through which wifi signals are sent across not only that wifi signals are sent through a router at our house but how is it brought in so network switches ethernet cables hubs ports lots of devices are there which are used in the story will catch up all that and one of the biggest and most important piece of this data otherwise what will you do with hardware and software sit and stare at them so without data none of this discussion will be fruitful so one of the most important components of information system is data that processes the data and information for a specific purposes so data resources that process the data so can you take up there okay what i will do is split the part of software into two one is called system software which is operating system the other one is called application software which do specific task now you have this photoshop ms office in ms office we have multiple again uh, so many sub softwares right word excel powerpoint and then so many individual applications are there which sort specific purposes like we use a vlc media player to listen to music we use an acrobat pdf reader to use or browse pdf files we use chrome or mozilla to open internet browser so like that all these are called application softwares but for all these to work and for our system to work who gives the life windows linux unix mac those kind of softwares give life to the hardware or not 
and those are called as system software so broadly software is again classified into two chalo before i discuss all this i would quickly want to discuss the four steps that we caught up orally what are those input process output of course they didn't mention much about storage but you should know about it data is collected from an organization from external environment and converted into a suitable format required for processing i hope all of you remember what we discussed in the second chapter about etl extract transform and load now extract where will you extract all this information from from the external environment so that is what we are supposed to start off with okay data collected from an organization from external environment in converted it into a suitable format converted into a suitable format what is it suitable for so that you can apply all the functions or activities on that making sure that the data will further be useful then what do you mean by process okay this is the 100th time we are seeing what is the definition of process because we have seen it in management you have seen it elsewhere in these subjects you have seen it in erp so answer to the word process is very simple what is that is a series of steps undertaken to achieve desired outcome or goal desired outcome or goal series of steps desired outcome or goal information systems are becoming more and more integrated with organizational process bringing more productivity and better control to those processes but automating activities using technology is not enough businesses are hoping to gain an advantage over their competitors by and are highly focused on the component of information systems the information is stored for future use information is stored for future use or they communicated to user after the application of respective procedure on it so theek hai that is a very simple aspect which just talks about what are input process and output and i don't think you have any problem in understanding that this is about basic things that we learnt about computers now let me also show you a brief on what are the components of the information system as i told you we will break down this software into two system software and application software so i'll renumber it people 1 hardware 2 system software 3 application software 4 data 5 network and communication 6 so let's rebrand what they gave here in the story in a little more wider sense okay we are not keeping out anything for our convenience we are making it look even better okay that's what i'm trying to figure it out for you so let's go here and take this part of information system to a greater detail so we say information system components information system components just stay put guys whatever is going to be discussed in today's segment is something that you have used so how do you know uh, it's uh, so basic that even i can guess sitting this side without even seeing whether you really did that or not i can comfortably tell you will agree with my statement at the end of the session don't really have to worry what are the six points that we have to discuss here we'll put it up all in clear points so that you know we will have a clean understanding people without people there is no point in discussing the story so there are a few people now people doesn't mean you and me only yeah you and me definitely we are called as end users correct we don't uh, deny the fact that we use the system so you and i are end users what will we do uh, but we both don't program right we are not any coders or somebody we are just end users but do you have other people also in the story coders right coders are there no uh and then we also have uh, database administrators so like that different people are there so when we say people we should not be kind of you know pinpointed at only the end user four people will come we will discuss very shortly then we get to the discussion of hardware now that's where you will have all the discussion of input devices you know input devices right keyboard mouse and then we have uh, the stylus like something that i used to write on screen here uh then we have uh, oh, what do you say mic which is a voice input huh so then we have barcode readers which is a optical reading input like that input devices then we have speakers monitor 
projectors, printers called as the output devices. So that's very elementary from school only, you know, those two hardware, input and output. But apart from that, we're going to make our discussion a little more interesting by talking about processing and storage devices. We'll talk about that people hardware and then software. And as you see two branches, we'll go with both those. One is called as operating system. OS in short, which is a very popular word. What is your OS? We keep talking, right? Windows 7, Windows 10 or Linux, Unix, Mac. So one part of this is operating system. The other one is called as application software. I think you have already seen what is an application software in the second chapter. Just the definition and the three layers. I don't know if you still remember that or not. You should. The application software. And then moving on, we will talk about network and communication devices. Network and communication. Otherwise, everything will be stationary. If you are the only one in the world, you can have a stationary system. Today, small kids also won't respect if you give them a, a you know phone or tab or laptop without any connection to the internet. You give them some phone without any connection to internet. That is. You tell them that you can't download any games. They'll throw that piece back on your face. Because it's worthless piece of plastic for them. That's all. No use. So they're like, no, I want to go online and play games. Okay, Not very small kids. If you are talking about somebody who's in the age group of 10 to 15. Like early teenage and all. They won't respect your system if it doesn't have the facility to connect network. Because these, these are times when people are starting to engage in social conversations. So they use all those chat apps. They end up playing all these multiplayer games. So give them something without network. They'll laugh at you or they'll throw that device basically. And then, okay, looking at from a point of view of a business, we have data. Data is the most key aspect of an organization. Anyway, it will take some time for us to get till data. Let us talk about other basic aspects. So you can also number it like this instead of, I mean, we are not doing anything wrong here. We are just, uh, what do you say? Uh, rebranding the story people we go with one second one is hardware third one is the operating system or system software fourth one is application software five is network and communication six is data eventually we will fulfill this discussion a little later now let's start with the first and very simple one called as people who are people people are those who are involved in the use people are involved in some of the use okay let's move on now to discuss this people yes there we go people are the most important element because none of these devices can do anything on their own right we need people to take it forward so stick to that decision which says people are the most important element in the computer based information system people involved include so i'm clearing your misconception from your mind that if you think that you know uh, only those people who are using these systems are the ones who are people wrong people are all those who are connected to the information system check there the people involved include users of the system no doubt users of the system and it also includes all those people who, four functions, who do what? Manage, run, program and maintain. Manage, run, program and maintain the system. So let me take you back to our story where we have been capturing the whole of this. We will go there and tell who are people. So four functions have been discussed here. As far as people are concerned, what are those? Run program manage and maintain run program manage and maintain now i'll also give you some names for who do this please note it down the ones who run the program like you and me we finally only use a program we are called as end users okay the ones who run the program they're called as end users the ones who program they are called as coders who are they coders the ones who manage and maintain, the ones who manage and maintain, these people are called as admin. These people are called as admin. So, 
end users coders and admin are the break up of that thing called as people so who are people is a broad definition every the lot of people involved in information system so thinking that only end users are people is not the right thing to do that is also something that we have to get clarified from here and then moving on to the next paragraph say more and more firms are realizing the importance of innovation uh, and to gain competitive advantage accordingly they are engaging themselves in various innovative activities understanding all these layers of information system will help the enterprise grapple with means deal with problems it is facing and innovate to perhaps reduce the total cost of production increase the income avenues and increase efficiency of the systems okay so that is the story there increase the efficiency of systems with that we move on to the next part which talks about hardware of which two of those things are very very simple input and output let's target input devices then we will talk about processing devices i hope you know what is a processing device of a computer called as cpu central processing unit right and then we have storage devices now when we talk about storage you should not just think only of a uh, what do you say hard disk ah sir storage space 320 gb 500 gb not just that how about the ram so there are two things there primary memory secondary memory and what you don't know are there are certain things which are called as internal memory you uh, by far figure out the systems being called as 32 bit system 64 bit system so what is a 32 bit and 64 bit there is something called as a registers registers a very small memory which are again used for a processing so like this we are going to discuss about all those points in starting with the most easiest out of the lot called hardware first we will see the definition then input devices hardware is underlying the tangible portion what is it what you can touch see if you are not interested you can even break it okay hardware is a tangible portion of our systems something that we can touch and see it basically consists of devices what devices that perform the basic functions of taking the input processing the data storing the data and providing you the output so that's what hardware is and i believe strongly that all of you already know what hardware is also i believe that you know the input devices so i don't have to struggle much in telling you what are those input devices are which we interact which help us interact with the system which include device like keyboard mouse and other pointing devices scanners barcodes webcams what i'm sitting in one now right now i'm sitting in front of one so like that all those are input devices the keyboard is taking all my text input mouse is taking all my pointer and moving scanners okay right now i don't use scanner or barcode because we are not in some supermarket or any mall where billing goes on there they use that you know it mic definitely mic and stylus both are something that i'm using in fact keyboard mouse webcam mic stylus and a touch screen i'm using all of those right now as i converse with you so keyboard gives you a text based input mouse is a position based or a point based input scanners and webcams are image based inputs while mic is used for a voice based input so i hope uh, there is no difficulty in understanding that piece that's a piece that we have been dealing with and we have used all these input devices so i don't think anybody should have any sort of a problem right then moving on we have uh, processing devices remember back then you discussed something in your school about um, school or wherever you spoke about uh, these things you remember talking about control unit arithmetic logic unit and memory unit uh, do you guys remember that which is the three components of something called as a central processing unit so whenever we are reminded of the word processing or we talk about cpu we talk about what cpu so that is uh, something which has the three units okay what are the three units we have three units here which are alu to start off with arithmetic logic unit which performs all these mathematical functions 
and then you have what is called as a control unit which controls the flow of data into and outside the system and then we have a small memory unit with something called as registers which i will explain in greater detail in the next paragraph check this out processing devices include computer chips that contain the cpu and also the main memory the cpu is the actual hardware cpu is what the actual hardware that interprets cpu is the actual hardware that interprets and executes the program instructions and coordinates how all the other hardware devices work together how all the other hardware devices work together the cpu is built on a small flake of silicon and can obtain i mean can contain the equivalent of several million transistors so back then we used this first generation second generation do you remember vacuum tubes then from there we started using uh, transistors now we have the small silicon chips which is exactly why your laptop is so sleek and slim nicely you are able to fit in the whole world into that only so there is an evolution and uh, in a small flake of silicon the cpu is built right now which contains something which is equal to several million transistors so that's why now the size of the device are very small and the processing ability is very high you have a smartphone that fits in your palm and uh, that is capable of doing what solid work you can in fact edit uh, photos and videos and all that also so such high end stuff also can be done on the uh, phone itself now because phones are coming with 6 gb ram right the processing ability is way higher so here it's not about a smartphone or a tablet or a laptop basically if it's an information system does it have hardware yes does it have software yes only thing it's not running on some windows operating system or mac it's running on android or ios okay which is again something a product of apple now the cpu is like the brain of the computer and what is a transistor a transistor is something that can take two values 0 and 1 binary remember so we can think of the transistors as switches which could be on and off that is taking a value of 1 or 0 taking a value of 1 or 0 so these are the points that you have to keep in mind and understand what exactly are the processing devices that we use basically it's called the cpu then so in hardware also what do we have input devices processing devices let's get to some data storage devices not every data storage device is a uh, 500 gb or a 1 tb hard disk that is called secondary storage but then there is internal memory primary memory then secondary memory then inside the secondary memory there is a portion that is carved off called as virtual memory so stay put for the next 5 minutes you understand something very important and uh, you know there is a possibility that it can come in the exam back then they have asked all these so data storage how does it go with refers to the memory where data and programs are stored refers to the memory where programs and data are stored various type of memory techniques or devices are given starting with what is called as an internal memory this includes processor registers and cache memory so what are the two types of internal memory a process register and a cache memory so what do you mean by a process register very small component okay they are internal memory installed in the system very small memory remember 32 bit 64 bit that is the kind of a a uh, register memory you can say registers are internal memory within the cpu which are very fast very small very fast and very small now there is also one more internal memory in the system which keeps a tab of all your recently used files okay i hope you guys know that whenever you are browsing content cache memory keeps a trace of all the recently and frequently used files that's why when you open something second time it will load very fast why because it doesn't go to the website to feed in all the data locally within your uh, smartphone or laptop only one trace of that will be there where in you will. now that is something that is called a cache memory but cache memory it keeps on storing the images of your frequently used locations main memory locations 
one fine day what happens the cache memory will be so full that it has so much to remember then your device will start slowing down how many of you have gone to that place and say clear cache memory because the cache memory will be so much that will be so difficult for your phone to take it then what you will do or you will go ahead and reset all the content so and from there again it will not store images uh, that day or afresh whatever you do it will store again so for example if you have gone to a browser and opened google home page first time it will load the google home page from google servers and in the cache memory it will store a trace of that google home page next time when you open google home page your system will not reach out to google servers it will reach out to the cache memory and cache memory already has an image of that i'll show you quickly which is why sometimes even when you have problems with internet connection home page will load i hope you guys observed that home page will load but when you click anything on the home page or anything that is when it says internet connection is not available but the home page shouldn't have also loaded no uh, had it been loaded from google servers or had an attempt been made to load the google home page from google servers it would have said internet connection not available but it didn't go to google servers only it went to your local resource okay i think i will show this to you with a greater clarity by putting it across so that you know you are comfortable with what happens here so there is a main memory where all the activity happens all your activities happening in a main memory let's put it straight then there is a cache memory now whatever activity is happening in main memory a trace of that just a trace not the whole a trace of what it is is stored in cache you can say frequently used so whatever frequently used main memory locations are there a copy of that is stored in cache memory this is the idea now this is first time the second time when you request when you request this it will not go to the main memory or it will not go to the main location from here it will go to the cache and cache will load off that page so whenever you request only something which is different that is when it will go for some new area otherwise every time it will load from cache now when cache memory is almost full where your devices are slowing down you went to the uh, you know storage settings and say clear all the cache when you say that then again when you start afresh with the main memory then again it will start collecting cache so once in a week or once in 10 days what you guys should go uh, do is to clear cache unless you really need that aspect but if your device is working fine maybe once in a month or maybe whenever your device slows down with too much of cache memory in it you can go and do this exercise of what i told you okay so this is the first part of uh, memory internal memory it is called let's check this out ha huh? so cache memory there is a huge speed difference between registers and primary memory to bridge these speed differences we have what is called as cache memory cache as it's pronounced in cash like how we don't write uh, don't call this as cache memory cache memory and all that many people you know uh, misspell that despite knowing that it is pronounced like this okay so it's not any cache or cache what is it cache like how you pronounce cash you will pronounce c a c h e also as cache memory a smaller faster memory which stores copies of data from the most frequently used main memory locations please underline what does it store stores copies of data from the most frequently used main memory locations so that the processor or registers can access it more rapidly than the main memory so don't have to go to main memory every time it is it is the property of what a locality of reference which allows improving substantially the effective memory access in the computer system so the time will be very short every time it won't go to the main memory location to bring stuff frequently used things are stored recently used items recently used tabs all those are there once in a while do you guys clear them up i hope you are doing all this with your phone 
so those of you who use android at least you guys can do go to the app manager and then click on any app and that will show how much data the app is using how much cache memory is there now i don't know exactly how to navigate you if you are using a, a iphone unless i see but right now i don't have an iphone next to me to guide you on that uh, maybe i'll check this out and later let you know otherwise you guys can know from where cache memory is so every app that you are using that is every uh, application software that you have downloaded on your smartphone will have a requisite cache memory so that you know every time it need not load all the data from the main memory that is the idea of the first part so after internal memory what we have is called as primary memory but before we go there a quick difference actually whatever you saw there a little elaboration of that only high speed very small i told you right 32 and 64 bit high speed storing small amount of data mostly 32 or 64 bit that is what is the property of registers talk about cache memory it's a fast memory built into the computer to reduce the average time taken to access data so instead of going from here to the main location and bringing the data it will go to cache i think we have already elaborately discussed that with the picture also so main memory location is there cache location is there cache is a shorter destination so every time the user asks for some information the system will quickly rush to the cache memory see whether it has that and gives sir what if cache memory does not store a copy it will be pulling out from the main memory location only and once you have the data where the system pulled the data from the main memory or the processor pulled it from the main memory next time uh, it will see how many times you are using it if it believes it's a frequently used then one trace will be stored in cache memory hello once again every memory uh, every content will not be stored in cache that will be stupidity frequently used the data stored within a cache might be the values that have been computed earlier or it could be the duplicates of the original values stored elsewhere so that's the thing original content is stored elsewhere a copy of that is stored in the cache memory registers are the only things most processors can operate on directly again cache memory is just a storage space cache memory won't do any processing major processing happens where on the processor which is the ram we will see that now okay cache memory is just an interface between cpu and main storage it is not directly accessible for operations sir can i copy some content and paste it in cache memory no okay so cache memory is not something that is directly accessible to you it's a bridge every time instead of going to main memory can we go to some other place and bring data yes what is that some other place cache memory now the second set of processor aspects are primary memory or it's called the main memory which is nothing but ram and rom ram is the random access memory which is one of the components that you will see while buying a device the higher the capability of ram the faster will be the processing ability that's what we believe right so that's why we go for a 4 gb ram 6 gb ram now phones are boasting that phones have 8 gb ram laptops having 8 gb and 16 gb ram okay laptops or desktop phones having 8 gb ram too much right so faster processing we all need everything fast so right now the world itself needs that speed so these devices and the best part about random access memory is a read and write memory so you cannot uh, just read the data but you can also make changes to it which is what we do but there is some content in the system which you can't change which is called rom so there is one device which carries permanent data a read only memory you can only read it like there is some part of the device which stores manufacturers information like in your phone whichever network you use whatever content you use the phone's device number the imei number and serial number will that all be there or not uh, where is it stored it's stored in a rom that is permanent same thing with anything every device has a address for itself so some manufacturer driven relevant content is stored in this aspect called as rom 
and rom data can only be read but not modified so let's get to that part here ram absolutely volatile in nature which means data is lost as soon as the power is turned off this is a read write memory this is a read write memory whose main purpose is to hold the program and data while they are in use information can be read as well as modified i'll tell you some things that you guys did to make sure that your ram is active without knowing that such activities will keep our ram active i'll tell you what those are and ram is what is responsible for storing the instructions and data the computer is using at the present moment right now what the computer is using will be used over the ram want me to give you an example tell you whatever you are doing whatever you are doing right now the respective apps that are open on your system they are all open on the ram they are all open where on the ram now you open one application you open one more you open the third one okay you are not happy you open the fourth one uh, still you are not satisfied you open 5 6 7 so seven or eight applications you opened at a time now when only one application was running everything be absolutely fantastic two good three okay four fine from five problems will start and when you go with six seven eight or 10 now i'm talking about depending on processing ability sir whatever you are talking will not happen with every device yeah i agree that so depending on you know the capability of the ram also so let's say your smartphone has a 4 gb ram and then you open 10 apps like this now the ram is fed up you are opening one and i mean like you open instagram from there you are hopping on to whatsapp suddenly open facebook right on the background cricket scores are loading uh, you open two others songs are playing on one side you're making a mess of that and you know you opening here and you guys have this ability multi window go here take this so you are texting somebody on instagram suddenly you are jumping from there texting on whatsapp you are irritating your phone to the core what will happen at one point of time the phone will get irritated and uh, its way of telling you get lost is what it will just stop stop means it won't switch off it will just Ah, uh, in your language, if you have to put that word, it's called hang. Okay, hang is a very colloquial word to tell that it's not a technical term. It's a term that is loosely used for people to understand. Sir, my phone hang from where? <laughs> no way. So we just use when the phone is non-responsive. Ah, uh, that is technical word, non-response, because the RAM says enough. So much load you are putting on me. Now I can't put up with your nonsense. I am not going to respond. now you will suddenly turn an engineer there and use your brilliance tell me what will you do what comes to your mind the moment we think of it ha huh? what will we do we'll use all our intelligence and do what we have a technique to take care of this right So what do we do? We go and restart, and then we boast as if we've done something there. Now, like I said, if you're doing this with your own phone, you might not bother about it much. Like, but if your mom comes, see this phone has hung. I don't know what to do. Then give here. I am there. Let me show you how it's done. So you take that, and as if you are some technical engineer, you will go and close all the apps, and then, or if it's completely hung already, you will hit the restart. and then everything gets normal and you will give back and then your mom is so happy that my son or daughter you know they can repair phones and all they go to that level of thinking all you did was to restart and how did that restart work for you only because of the point that you read that all these applications were on the ram and this ram got overburdened i hope all of you can relate to this because it happened at least once if not with mom or dad or somebody else or with our own phones we all experience that we have a 4 gb ram and we will run so many applications like i said songs are playing one side instagram is loading on one side the explore page is loading here you are typing somebody on whatsapp facebook is open in the background some other applications are running in the background your phone is constantly giving you warnings too many applications on ram you may have to force close 
immediately what you will say there also you will reject and they will still continue to use so you will take the ram to the highest testing point and it will test its patience after one point of time ram won't tell you anything it will hang so that is a colloquial word right hang that's all the only way we need to do is turn off and turn on why because the first point that you read ram is a volatile memory the moment power is off whatever applications were open on that will all go ha huh, but there is uh, a slightly even more technical aspect called as restore points so despite you do this turn off and turn on you can restore the system to a particular point let's not have that discussion right now because it will be too outside the lines i will talk about it with you guys i i want you to know that also so i will talk about it once we are through with this okay let's not discuss this here and complicate the story so that's the story about ram going about with rom manufacturers information now that is a pretty critical thing you don't have to do anything there is some stationary information now as you saw previously a computer can understand only 0 and 1 that is binary but we start talking in so many languages like cobol fortran uh, c c++ java we means not you and me the programmers so when we run the program several programs are run on several platforms then how is the system able to understand all that so manufacturer he will have something loaded into the system called as compilers or interpreters these are all additional information they are all not there for you but i want you to know so there are some things called as compilers and interpreters which are there inside the system which will convert high level languages this is cobol fortran all that they are called high level languages into low level language called the binary 0 and 1 but sir i didn't install any program to do it you need not install it will come with manufacturers uh, device itself but sir where will they store no, they won't store on your hard disk there are certain devices inside called as rom which will be there manufacturers information date of manufacturer serial number imei for the phones all these are stored there only read only memory you can't do anything you can't tamper it you can't do anything read that this is absolutely non volatile so whether you uh, when whether you have power or it it's on off doesn't matter so when it goes off you can uh, it will still be there that's what they're saying contents remain even in the absence of power usually these are used to store small amount of information usually what they used to store small amount of information with kick reference by the cpu information can be read but not modified sir what all are stored in this as i just told you programs like translators manufacturers will only store the data like translators what are the, there are two types of translators compilers and interpreters if you want to write down there you can write otherwise also it's okay as long as it's not there fine so what are the two sorts of memory that we discussed internal memory which has registers internal memory which has registers then we have primary memory which has ram and rom ram is what 8 gb 16 gb maybe those guys who are involved in animation and all will have a 32 gb ram in their system that to high end but our house now we use 4 8 sometimes 16 okay cool latest models are having 16 gb but that is only the ram how about extra space to store all your contents or i have songs photos videos to store where you have a secondary storage called the hard disk now hard disk is not the only secondary storage cd dvd pen drive flash drive so many blu ray so many ways are there where you have in addition to what you can do in system for a permanent storage for a longer time with a higher size or bigger capability the secondary memories are available in bigger sizes and thus programs and data can be stored on secondary memories now if you have songs on your hard disk and you want program like uh, vlc media player which is a program which can play these songs sir can this program directly access songs no this program will be open on ram ram will send instruction to this memory and pull off that particular song that you want to play and the song will be played on the ram that's all because the other location is a dumb location it's just the storage this application is only a facilitator so where does all the action happen on the ram which is why it is called the main memory that's where the entire activity goes on and why do you say when the ram capability is high the phone is faster or device is faster 
only because the more the space ram has higher the accommodability higher will be the processing ability as simple as the more number of programs it can accommodate now you are using a slightly higher end phone not using the basic ones using a slightly higher end phone it works right even if you open these 10 applications that i told you on one side you open the mail songs are playing youtube is going in the background okay and uh, now youtube when it's in background it won't play but it will still keep you know running correct now you are watching a video on youtube and then you minimize it or it won't play but whatever it is doing will still be on the ram data consumption is going on so like that there are certain thing uh, two things that you should know here are foreground and background processing i hope you guys know this but i'm telling some things that you see on screen which is processing in front of you they are called foreground processing while there are certain aspects that happen in the background that is why sometimes when you want to shut down suddenly it will give you a warning programs are running in the background i hope this warning sign many of you have seen it huh the programs are running in the background do you still want to force stop i hope you can recollect that now huh so that is there so secondary storage is not directly accessible by the cpu the computer usually uses it input or output channel to access the secondary storage and transfer the desired data using the intermediate primary storage which is ram so one ram then the storage location secondary storage do not lose the data therefore it is non volatile what are the main features of this secondary storage device like a hard disk it's non volatile it has greater capacity not like ram 4 8 or 16 gb secondary memories are available in what now it is you have 2 tb hard drives also 1 tb also gone 2 tb hard drives are available but most commonly 1 tb is used but 2 tb hard drives are also available 500 gb 1 tb 2 tb just imagine what sort of a space you have greater economy you spent less you know uh, a 1 tb hard disk will hardly cost you like what 4000 branded one 4 to 5000 a good brand one this is 1 tb hard disk but you know the cost of a ram is almost similar or even higher sometimes ram has only a 4 gb capability but its cost is very high because of its processing ability the making of the device definitely is costly so greater economy which means the cost these devices is lesser when compared to registers and rams and it has a very slow speed when compared to uh, primary storage that is ram so these devices are dumb devices dumb devices mean only they do storage they don't do any processing all the processing is done by ram that's what we need to take home now let me also take you through one more thing which you guys again might have observed but not concentrated much will be something called as cache memory so i want you guys to stay put in trying to understand this sorry not cache memory virtual memory okay one second here uh, we go on with virtual memory how about virtual memory now let's say this is the secondary memory now i hope all of you have observed something that in a 16 gb pen drive when you connect is all 16 gb available no in a 500 gb hard disk so you are connecting a 500 gb hard disk you know how much is available for storage only 468 gb roughly sir correct sir balance 32 gb vanished uh, it didn't vanish what happens is the operating system we'll talk about this in the next class also but right now i'm just giving you an insight the operating system which does all of this work this operating system like windows or whoever from this secondary memory which is this heavy storage device it will carve off some portion what will it do it will carve out some portion okay and keep it as a reserve keep it as a reserve it won't use it or it won't allow you to use it to the fullest extent so if 500 gb hard disk is there with you you can fully use the 500 gb some portion is carved out by the operating system sir what will it do with that carved out space no, i'll tell you 
Did I just tell you that all the programs run on RAM? Okay. Now let's consider this to be the RAM. RAM program number 1 is running. Program number 2 is running. 3, 4, 5. Okay, in this example, I'll limit to 5. When you started the fifth program, started crying. And started like, I can't handle this anymore. And then you wanted to now open the sixth one. Where is the place? RAM is already fully occupied. RAM is already fully occupied. But sir, program number 2, whichever is there, no. This we are not using from some time. Can you temporarily move this program 2 to some other place and allocate the space to 6? Okay, I am ready to do that. That's a great idea. Temporarily move this program 2 to some other place and give 6 the way to perform. Agreed. But where will you move it? Uh, so what happens when RAM runs low on space? Remember this. When RAM runs low on space, temporarily one of the applications which is least priority out of all this, whichever is the least priority, that means whoever is not being fully operated right now, is moved to a place which was earlier carved out from the secondary memory. And this place is called as virtual memory. And virtual memory comes into the game only when RAM runs low on space. If RAM is fully accommodative and the entire space available on RAM is usable, then you don't move it. But when RAM runs low on space, the least priority application out of all those ones which are on, the least priority ones are shifted to a particular place on the virtual memory and this particular area is called as a paging file. What is it called? A paging file. So this is all temporary. So program number 2 which is least used right now will now be moved to the paging file and 6 will be given place to work on RAM. And when task 6 is finished or other task is finished where RAM believes that it can accommodate program 2 again. It is brought back from the paging file to the RAM. So moving data from RAM to the paging file and paging file to the RAM will ease out whenever RAM runs low on space. But this whole story will come into picture only when RAM runs low on space. If the RAM capabilities are very high that it need not take the help of what is called as virtual memory, it won't even go there. But you have what is called as virtual memory in your system. Any time you find shortage of any of this, you can definitely go ahead and use it. So, I hope you got this clarity. Let us now go ahead and see that last paragraph which specifically talks about what is called as a virtual memory. Once we finish the oral explanation, it's important. It's not a separate device, but it's an imaginary memory supported only by some operating systems in conjunction with the hardware. Listen carefully. Whenever the computer lacks RAM, if computer lacks RAM needed to run a program or operation, Windows will use virtual memory to compensate. Virtual memory combines the computer's RAM with a temporary space on the hard disk. When RAM runs low, same wordings, what I told you now. When RAM, I mean, in fact, I told you the same so that you remember it well. When RAM runs low, Virtual memory moves the data from RAM to a space called the paging file. Moving data to and from the paging file frees up the RAM to complete its work. Okay. I hope you are clear the concept. Let me just show it to you once again so that you guys are comfortable in dealing with it. Okay. Yes. If you want to note it down, you can note the example as well. This is what... Operating system will do what? It will carve out a portion. Sir, but they didn't tell that line. Uh, they will tell you that line in the functions of operating system. Remember. Right now, one line of what I told is printed. Right? When RAM runs low on space, virtual memory will move from the RAM to the paging file. And whenever it's available, paging file back to the RAM. This is what is normal. Okay, that line did you see? But sir, what about this carving out? Where will you show us that operating system will carve out a portion? Uh, you have to wait for the next topic because the next topic is that only the functions of operating system. There we will see. Okay. So I hope this gives us a clarity. So now we will go back here.
to fill this chart as to whatever we have read under hardware where do we stand right now under hardware we spoke about input devices we've talked about processing devices we're talking about memory devices right input process storage or memory you can say anything storage devices where the breakup is in four correct what are those four internal memory primary or main memory secondary memory and virtual memory internal memory further has registers and cache memory primary memory has what is called as ram and rom and to conclude this story we have the last one called as output devices that's not much of a difficulty at all so let us wrap this up very easily okay so we'll go in here to figure out that piece moving on oh yeah before we discuss output devices i want you to read what is on screen because my job is over i've already told you that difference table and that could well be a question in the exam please take a deep look you know all the differences not because you are very familiar with them because i have been shouting all this while come on quick very easy so all these points have been taken on record and taken into consideration so that should not at all be a problem do you see that basic primary memory is directly accessible secondary memory is not directly accessible instructions or data normally are executed currently that means right now and secondary memory is just a storage it's stored in the secondary memory primary memory is volatile this is non volatile primary memory it is a made of semiconductors that's why they are costly okay the cost of a 4 to 8 gb ram and compare it to a 1 tb hard disk they are almost the same so secondary memories are made of magnetic and optical material definitely much cheaper and which is why you get high space secondary memory devices almost the cost of a ram who's faster no doubt the ram is faster this is very very slow it just stores guys nothing else it does access primary memory is accessed by data bus data bus is nothing but bus means a bundle of wires okay through cables bundle of wires secondary memory can be accessed by input output channels like what like a usb port anything input output channels generally the usb nowadays that's why we have pen drives or external hard disk with a usb wire you can connect size main memory is very small because it's only 4 gb 8 gb 16 like that but the large secondary memory expensive no doubt rams are much costlier than secondary memory like i just told you an 8 gb ram will be much costlier than a 1 tb hard disk so just imagine secondary memory is cheaper when compared to primary memory primary memory no doubt is an internal memory while secondary memory is external which is why we call it as external hard disk or external memory okay the simple comparative table which comprises of all those points that you should be very very familiar with so we will now wrap this hardware part with output devices and it will be too elementary for me to discuss with you what output devices are still you know it right monitors okay basically devices through which the system responds is called the output device visual output device like a display device that means a monitor conveys text graphics and video information shown on a display device is called a soft copy yeah i hope all of you are very well aware of what is soft copy and hard copy a printed version of any document in physical form is called hard copy while anything that you see on a computer screen in the form of a pdf document or right now this video is also a soft copy okay so information exists electronically and is displayed for a temporary period what devices you can use 
CRT monitor. Nobody is using all that. Right now, what we use is LED. Okay. So cathode ray means that old big dabbas will come. No monitor. Nobody is using that. Huh. So display device includes CRT monitors, LCD LEDs, displays, gas, plasma, and all gone. Right now, LEDs. And that too with high definition and ultra high definition. 4K clarity and all are coming. What sorts of output will be there? Output can be in the form of text, audio, video. So let's see. Text, graphic, tactile. You know what is tactile output? Tactile means something that you can touch and feel. Okay. They are in the form of dots. They are not used for uh, you know regular conversations. They are used to help those people who can't see. I hope uh, you should have observed the buttons in the lift. Not the old lift. The new ones. Next to the floor number, some dots will be there. So that people who can't see also can just go and touch that like this and they can figure out, right? That is called tactile output. You can give that tactile output on paper also. So I hope you know that, you know, people who can't see use a language called Braille. So they'll just touch that and keep reading. Okay. Like how you see your normal notes and read. They just scroll their finger on that and they read with the same. I've seen some people... They read much faster than people who can see the book and read English. So they're so talented. I mean, just that sometimes you're not gifted enough to have everything. So, I mean, at least those of us who have should appreciate all that. So we go with text output, graphical output or, you know, drawings. Words and sentences, text output, drawings, charts and photographs and animation are all uh, graphical outputs. Tactile output is raised line drawings which are useful for individuals who are blind. Audio output. I mean, you've been listening to this audio for quite some time now. Uh, the audio output. What I told you sometime back is I speak in the mic here is a audio input. You get to listen it in your earphones, the audio output. Music, speech and other sounds are audio output. Video output is also what you're seeing on screen. So images. Video is not, you know what is a video, right? Video is not something different. It's a, Motion picture it is called. If you click a stationary picture, it's one shot. When several shots like that are played continuously, that is what is called video. That's why video is also called motion picture. Or generally, we don't use that word, but for all the movies, they, they're called motion pictures because the pictures are captured in such a way that they can reflect the motion. So I stand here, you click a picture of me, stationary. When I walk, you click thousand pictures of me from here to here and play all of them at once. It's called motion picture, which is nothing but a movie. Most common examples of output devices are very difficult there. Speakers, headphones, uh, monitor, printer, voice output. And automatic navigation system like your uh, inbuilt Google Maps. Nowadays in cars which are powered with artificial intelligence and machine learning. It's called uh, connected car. Okay, so that connected car story we saw in the fourth chapter, right? So that will have an automatic navigation system. Okay, so that's the end of our second branch which talks about hardware in complete detail. Where do we stand? As of now, you can see we have discussed who are people. We've also discussed about hardware and that too in greater detail. Input, processing, storage storage with four branches and the output then under software we have two operating system software and application software when we see or talk about any of this i will give you an oral explanation of both this just to have a quick idea and then we'll get them in detail in our next segment so for now what are we talking about operating system without which the system cannot run okay check this out software when you deal with software, what are you talking about? Software can be spoken about in two categories. Operating system and application software. All the hardware, they are just piled up and useless. If there is no software to run them. Like a human being with all the bones and flesh and the entire skeletal system is there without blood flow. How will it be? The same thing. You have the entire skeletal system without a software then it's useless to collect all these devices and don't give them a life. So the operating system is that software that gives them the life. Check this out. It's a set of computer programs that manages computer hardware, resources and acts as an interface 
with the computer applications. Otherwise, you have to just sit and stare those hardware. It will not tell you anything. The operating system is the vital component of the system software in a computer system. Application programs. Now, for all the hardware to work, you need operating system. For all the application softwares to work, also you need operating system. Okay. Application programs usually require an operating system to function that provides a convenient environment to users for executing their programs. Computer hardware with operating system. Computer hardware with an operating system can thus be viewed as an extended machine. Otherwise, it's a lifeless or useless piece of plastic, silicon, fiber all brought together with no sense or purpose. Understood? So, you want to bring all of these together, view it as an extended machine. Hardware alone is not sufficient. Hardware should always be backed up by the software here. Okay? Some of the prominent operating systems which you guys should be very familiar with are Windows 7, 8. Now we have Windows 10, Linux, Unix. Sir, all these are only operating systems or do our smartphones also have? Yeah. Even all, any computing device. All computing devices run an operating system. Like for example, for personal computers, the most popular operating system is Windows. Many, many home computers run on Windows. You can even use the Apple's OS X and different versions of Linux. But when it comes to smartphones and tablets, they are using Android and iOS. Android, such as Apple's iOS and Google's Android. Some of these tabs even run on Windows. That Microsoft tabs are there. No, they all run on Windows. And also one more software called RAM. Research in Motion by BlackBerry. Outdated. Nobody is using that now. Okay. So it's all Android and iOS. And sometimes you even see the Windows tablets from Microsoft. But for that, nothing very specific. So this is what is the operating system that provides the real life to the hardware. Now it's important for us to also understand what activities that this operating system does there are a set of uh, you know eight activities and each of this activity if it is not done there is no way how you can execute or use the computer so i'll just give you an insight here you can take for all hardware to get life you need operating system so it performs all the hardware function so if the keyboard has to do the work of keyboard, if the mouse has to do the work of a mouse, for any hardware in the system, if it has to behave like the hardware that it is meant to, you need operating system. And how will user, that is you and me, communicate to the system? Again, through operating system. If Windows is not there in your laptop, what will you and your laptop talk? You will only have to open and close. It's just a play toy, that's all. So, correct or not, a laptop without any software in it it's a play toy open and close you can play that game that's all so the operating system provides what is called as a user interface then one best thing about operating system is now you have the windows software every system manufactured can accommodate the same software irrespective of which hardware it is just imagine for every computer manufactured if you have to, for every computer manufactured, if you have to write one one operating system, it is next to impossible to imagine. Correct? It is just next to impossible to imagine that. No. So that is why operating system has one amazing feature called as hardware independence. It doesn't matter which hardware you are using. You can run the same Windows operating system on Dell laptops. HP laptops, Acer laptops. In fact, go to the market, buy different components that make up a computer and assemble a system and install Windows in it. On that also it will work. So what is the third point saying? Irrespective of what the hardware is, if it's capable of holding up an operating system, it will do so. Then two things are there. Which program to open first? Which program to run? Which one to shut down? Which one to move to paging file? Which one to stop? Which task to perform first? Which task to do next? So I told, right? Operating system is the one that will carve out 
that is what is memory management virtual memory is created by carving an area of hard disk i told you orally some time back that's been very clearly visible there which task to do first which task to do next is called task management memory management then task management thanks to operating system if there is no windows in your laptop or desktop you won't be able to connect to any network so if you want to connect to internet again you need operating system an operating system allows you an ability to create passwords yes or no okay many people don't create but that's a different story so but you can go to a particular place and set up a password for your system which gives you logical security and neatly it will organize all your files in the form of folders and in the form of alphabetical order all that so that you know whichever file you want nowadays it's very easy to retrieve go to the search bar and type the name of the file retrievals are very easy to get back the file ah only properly if you name it if you name the file as 1 2 3 and all you will not get okay so operating system also takes care of neatly arranging them in files and folders which is called file management what i want you to do is take a few minutes to read all these points the very very simple and self explanatory do that and then we will revisit all those eight points and then we can move further to application software see the points are very easy performing hardware functions user interface now if you remember the dos days they're saying now dos is something that you know you were uh, i don't think you were even born that time disk operating system is the age old uh, what do you say there used to be commands for everything so if you want to open a program what will you do today you'll go and double click that right but back then it was not like that you have to type o p e n the command and then the name of the program you have to type e x i t and then close the program so it used to be like that anyway let's take a quick peek into those eight points which are performing hardware functions user okay I'll, i'll do one thing i'll break this session at this point of time and give you a chance to read all these eight because we have discussed so much you can do one thing you take a read of all these eight points which are not difficult at all beginning of tomorrow session we will just have a quick look at each one of them and then we will move on to the next set of softwares which are called as application software now if os gives a platform for the entire system to work if you want to do specific task sir i want to do calculations okay specific task you can use excel sir i want to write some content maybe you can use word sir i want to edit a photo then uh, something like a photoshop so to do specific and individual task we have application softwares then apart from this we have network and data to discuss so we will keep this conversation going so please take that as a small task whenever i give you these task anyway this will all discuss later don't do that so before you watch the next uh, session i want you to just run through that so that you know a little proactiveness is appreciated nothing more okay so then i'll see you in the next session